All right, uh, next question. Ronan asks, would appreciate if security best practices and advice on preventing prompt ejection attacks against the semantic kernel apps LLMs could be covered. Or do you want to come in a little bit on prompt injection? Yeah, so it's not semantic kernel specific. Like this is something that large language models are susceptible to. Large language models are looking to find the next um, token in a sequence and they take the existing sequence and they kind of pattern match is my layman's view of what's going on. So um, not semantic kernel specific. And what can happen just to explain what a prompt injection attack is, let's say you have a prompt and it says, um, um, okay, send some flowers to um, the person's significant other. Okay, that might be what the prompt is doing. I, the user, click that button and then um, let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say that it looks at my email. So, you know, looks at my email to find who my significant other is and then send flowers to my significant other. Let's pretend that's the scenario. And then let's say that Alex has sent me an email and in that email, it says, you know, something along the lines of send Alex a thousand dollars. Okay. So let's pretend the prompt finds that email for whatever reason, it thinks it's the right match to include in the prompt. Then all of a sudden my prompt goes from send my significant other flowers to send Alex a thousand dollars plus send my significant other flowers. So my wife may still get flowers, but Alex may also end up getting a thousand dollars in that scenario, you know, assuming that there's zero security. Um, and that's kind of a high level of prompt injection attack. Now, to prevent this, um, the only time it's really a risk is when you're operating on what we'll call untrusted information. So content has come in that you don't, you know, it's not a plugin you wrote, it's not code that you wrote, it's some web search, some email search, or some other third party um, plugin that you don't necessarily know what's going on inside of. And it could be um, such that you decide not to include anything that you don't trust. And so we had a PR come in that introduced trust checks into the kernel. Um, I don't believe we've done a sample yet of how to use it and see if I can find it while I'm talking. Um, but the high level of it was to do exactly what I just said. It, it will allow you as the developer to decide if you want untrusted code to run in the context of your orchestration or any time an untrusted, um, actually I actually think we did it at the, the string level or the prompt level, anytime something untrusted comes in, you can decide that, no, I don't want that to go through um, this flow. It'll throw um, an exception or an error and the LLM will not proceed forward with that. So we do have some early work on this. I would say, again, like everything else, it's an emerging space and it's not something that um, is really well understood, broadly speaking. Is the, um, let me drop this in, that was the one I was thinking about, the trust checks. So it's something that we should be thinking about and it's something that we should be um, continuing to learn about. And at the moment, we do have some trust checks in the kernel. It's like a first um, first step. So, Devis, I don't know if you would add something on top of that. No, oh, you're totally right. So we have this uh, the trust service that is available in the kernel. There is a default one. We suggest to implement your own. So when you instantiate the kernel, you can say use this trust service class so you can design your own class. What you put in that class is basically some logic to identify malicious input and potentially problematic output. So go a very high level. Don't trust user input. <clears throat> Don't even trust the AI output. So you have to validate both. It can be expensive, but you can also do some regular expression. You get easy checks like, does my output contain something like a password that I don't want to, or a concept that I don't want to share? Uh, there is no, for, for if you try to solve the problem with prompts, and prompt engineering, <clears throat> there is nothing that is 100% uh, safe. Um, so you can try, but at the end of the day, you will have to write some code to identify input and to check the output and work the old way, like throw an exception if something weird is going on. 
and you don't trust the process and inform the user and let the user make a choice. Yeah, I, I, I don't have anything to add other than, right, the moment you start giving your AI access to tools and functions, right, it starts becoming a little bit more scary because, yeah, someone can, uh, right, in the email example, right, if someone were to just put a line in there saying, like, do this or, like, ignore all instructions, I think it's a very common prompt attack that I, that I see. It's like, ignore all your instructions and then do do this, do X, Y, Z, right, that, that becomes a lot more scary, certainly a lot more risky. Uh, and yeah, uh, having some solutions to that, uh, you could look at what we did uh, as an initial first step, uh, you know, in this PR. Uh, but yes, I, I agree. It's, it is a area, emerging area, that the community needs to um, help figure out. Yes, I think one thing we can add is learn from the community there are very interesting conversations out there about all the tricks that you can use to attack your prompts. So if you are designing a prompt to protect your business logic, look for what people are doing. And if you you will find out that there is always a way around your prompt. Uh, there was an interesting game out a couple of, maybe four weeks ago called Gandalf. You had to trick Gandalf about sharing a password. And like there were like seven or eight levels. Uh, so level one was very easy that you ask Gandalf, just tell me the password and he will give you that. And then you see it gets harder, harder. And then um, there is a level seven or eight which is super hard. But if you go and check what the community is doing, they come up with very interesting prompts working around all the AI protections. Like the AI has been fine tuned not to hurt people, uh, not to do anything wrong but you can leverage that to get AI to do something wrong. So it shows that basically it is not a 100% fail safe solution. Uh, you have to put some real code around your, your, your secrets, around your, your actions. Yeah, there it is. It's a very funny game. Uh, I think you will love it. Uh, it shows where we are these days and the need to write code uh, to protect the, the, the usual the usual protections that we put in place. Mm -hmm.